So we still have the Protoss player posturing around a little bit more. I think that he is waiting for the plus two weapons. No, he's just starting up his fourth, which is immediately spotted by the very cleverly placed Overseer. Now we have the big army moving out. When we look at the supply, it is 116 versus 108, but these critical upgrades are about to, well, not this critical upgrade. This critical upgrade, however, is about to finish. Adrenal glands is going to be done at like the 13, almost 14 minute mark. So now look at what ends up happening to this attack. These Zerglings get in and wreck these Stalkers. Look at how fast they are going down. The Zealots get in, start trying to clean them up, but when there's a ton of infested Terrans getting in the way, just dealing damage indiscriminately to everything that's around, it doesn't matter what these zealots are trying to do and now they're as they try to retreat it's like no 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 guys what are these these are ranged zerg units yeah i didn't think you'd be uh, expecting to see those were you so the infested terran bomb combined with the very highly upgraded zerling zerglings was able to completely turn away that attack and now look at the supplies zerg's taken a very nice lead also the thing that i like about this is that he probably went a little bit overboard with the terran but he didn't i mean the infested terrans but he didn't have to and there's still a little bit of energy left on these infestors, so it's not like he barely managed to hold off that attack. He still could have dropped more infested Terrans. He still could have done some good things with fungal growths if he had not been quite so happy with throwing them around. And so that makes it look as though that hold was a lot more common. We now see the Dark Templar on the field which is going to become important in a little bit as they are extremely effective harassment units. And yet again, doing a cut in, he gets to this center point and now all of a sudden, what's where's he going? He has to throw down spine crawlers here. This is I'm going to pause it right here cuz it's such a good move. This is a brilliant attack by the Protoss. He splits his Zerg opponent in three ways. Is he going into my natural? Is he going into my third or is he going into my fourth? And as we look with these Dark Templars, the answer to two of those questions is yes. So it's a fantastic double-pronged attack that takes advantage of the way this map is set up, in that if you don't already have control of this space, if you don't already have control of this space, or probably just this space, to hold better control of both of them, and you don't engage your opponent before they've managed to get in this very advantageous position that the Protoss player has managed to get himself in, you can be in a lot of trouble. And go back to the attack. The Zerglings running in, getting a pretty good surround, but not the best. This is not the best way for him to be handling the engagement. He is starting to drop some very good fungals, though, though we do just see it. Those Zerglings did a lot more damage than they probably should have because their upgrades were so good. And over here, these Dark Templars completely wrecking this base. It's not even funny how easy this is. They kind of walk in and kill it because they're bored. However, these static defenses, once again, being their weight in gold, do manage to force these zealots back, and that is another perfect cut-in move. He moved up here, didn't like what he saw, moved back down here in order to try to snipe the third. Just a brilliant, brilliant Protoss play, taking perfect advantage of what this map gives you to work with. Unfortunately, he does commit a little bit too far here. With the worker pull and with the static defenses that were already built, this attack ends up getting surrounded, which is one of the disadvantages, potentially, of getting a little bit too bold with a cut-in play. You are vulnerable to being surrounded on two sides if you just completely misunderestimated, to quote our dear former President Bush, you've completely misunderestimated the amount of units that you're going to have to deal with and will pretty much get run over by an effective counterattack, which is what we see end up happening here. Now, Zeno has hopped right back into the lead and e in supply, and even though his army is... I'm sorry, even though his base count is greatly lessened. He is now down to just three bases against his opponent's four. His tech, which we now see nine Ultralisks on the way, that's going to be very, very fun to watch in just a moment. But his tech, his upgrades, and just general army is vastly superior to his opponent. So now we do see that the rank three weapons is on the way, and Archons are beginning to be warped in by our Protoss player. This is one of my other favorite parts of the variant, is that Zeno just retakes this base. He needs the money, he lost the base, but okay, he just retakes it. That's not something you see in a lot of games of StarCraft II Ordinary. Sometimes when you just lose the base, it's like, wow, I have that base, I guess I'm just so far behind that I'm never going to be able to recover, and I need to GG out. And that is one of the things that when each base is worth less, it's not quite as punishing to lose one of the bases at any given time. So as we see, the center attack path is still being uh, very important, and 
right now, Shakti doing something a little risky. He's going for that very, very dangerous and hard to hold fifth base. Just look at the amount of open space that's here, and look at how smart you have to be about splitting up your army. You need somebody here, somebody here, and somebody here, or at least a very large force here that can try to get in here if there's a side run around. And look at this. Xeno's having no part of it. He just sends all of these 5-3 ultra, or sorry, I should say 3-5 ultra lists right up to this base and says, nope, put that away. Don't want to see it. And pretty much Xeno ends up pulling back his whole force from the counterattack that he was trying to do and running to try to get back here and deal with these incredibly well up, uh, upgraded ultralisks. He has the Dark Templars in the mix, trying to do a ton of damage, but look at how fast even Zealots that aren't taking any bonus damage from armor go down against the AoE splash of these Ultralisks. They get right in and crush most of that force. They do end up largely going down, mostly because of that very, very smart Overseer snipe, and these, what is it, it's like 60 damage, yeah, the 60 damage Warpblade attack from the Dark Templar getting in, and completely saving Shakti right there. If he did not have those Dark Templar, that would have been far more costly. But what did that attack do for Zeno? He was back in the supply lead before that one last round of warpins. He secured his fourth, feels very safe in it. He was able to deny the fifth of his Protoss opponent. All in all, very successful, even though he lost most of the attacking force. And the really critical units, losing Ultralists obviously isn't a good thing, but all of these Infestors, a large number of Zerglings, and a couple of Ultralists are still safe so he can use them to defend this little bit of aggression that's coming in from his opponent. This is kind of a bad attack. His army got a bit spread out as the Protoss player is moving down, and it leads to stuff like this, where, for example, you'll see all of these Zealots getting fungled in the back and really just not being able to get involved in the fight at all. When they finally do, they are attempting to bring their 11 damage Psyblades against the 6 armor Ultralisk, which takes just a hell of a lot of attacks to actually kill. This was a little bit of a lag spike. I watched this game many, many times trying to figure out what that is. All that gets typed in like half a second. And so I think there was just a bit of a lag spike right there that both players had to deal with. Very nice blink play, killing as much as he can with these stalkers that he knows are going to get run down by these very well upgraded lings. And we continue to see both players have moved into uh, uh, to to use a little bit of a StarCraft reference. They're going into July Zerg mode. They have both pretty much stopped expanding aside from this one base that Shakti has tried to get up on his opponent and are in all attack mode. Well, now Xena's going to make me look like a fool and also take a base. But when you look at the production tab, it's mostly... Uh, attacking units and structures to help make more attacking units that we see on the field. Protoss Ground Armor level 2 finally going up and a very large group of overseers hanging out to make sure that all of those DTs are not able to run around and continue making life hard for a Zerg player. And we see, what's he having to do? He's having to spread out his forces very cleverly. He has a large amount of static defense, and that's really, I'm going to pause it right here, this is what's making our Zerg player feel safe in leaving most of his forces over here. They can get back fairly quickly if there is an attack, which could come pretty quickly down from this base. Though this base, I think, is kind of a mistake. He does not have his army anywhere near in position to protect this, but more on that in a moment. But it's these very nicely placed static defenses that are letting our Zerg player feel safe. And we'll also look at the huge investment that Shakti has done in trying to get static defenses up for these bases. He has not done any for this, which I also think is a mistake. If he wants to hold that against something as simple as a, like 10 Zergling run by, he's going to need some better defenses there. But both players have been investing a lot more in the static defenses in order to just protect against those nasty little harassments that can put you behind in a game. And I like that a lot, because in general, in ordinary vanilla StarCraft 2, there are just so many units on the field that even this number of cannons would be killed extraordinarily quickly if the Zerg decided that he just really wanted to get in and snipe this base. He'd be able to allocate like 30 or 40 Zerglings to the attack, lose them all, and be, okay, I'll just make more of them. They're essentially free when I have a bank of 5,000 minerals. So, back to the replay. This base, once again, going up at the gold for Zeno, but I'm really not convinced by that. That's pretty risky. He's getting a little bit ballsy with this aggression. I don't think that this is necessarily the best decision, but when we look at the position, he's caught his enemy's army and he just walks straight into the natural. 
His opponent's caught totally off guard. He really needed to be practicing some of the better army splits that fewer minerals per base maps make you do. Unfortunately, now that he does get back here, even though these are very well upgraded units and can see the Dark Templar, they get rolled pretty quickly. Blink Stalkers do do additional damage to armored units and get wiped out, or I'm sorry, and wipe out just even Ultralisks pretty quickly. And Ultralisks, because they don't do any additional damage to Zealots, really aren't that effective when you get right down to it at dealing with them. It's a big drone transfer over here, needs to be taking that gas pretty quickly. But you'll notice that the two players are just because they're Masters players and they have experience on these maps, macroing incredibly well. There's a bit of a mineral swamp for the Protoss players, but in general, they're keeping their money quite low, but also expanding enough to get the money they need for the armies that they want to have. This base is very easily sniped right here. You can see, once again, some of the vulnerability that not spreading out your army or investing in static defenses can put you in. This army's caught totally out of position. Nothing they can do goes down almost instantly. But look at the position that that puts the Protoss in. All of a sudden, this army is coming back, and it's coming for blood. It is going to wipe out this force. And this force is cannot leave, because Zerglis moves so so much faster than it does. That was a really bad plank, by the way. He should not have tried to get aggressive there. But Zerglings run so fast that if he just tried to run away straight up, he would have been caught and killed to a man. So he had to do something there to actually be fighting his opponent. And as the game is continuing on, this force is continuing to get bigger and bigger, but the supplies are staying pretty much the same. The fifth base has gone up for both players, and they're mostly able to defend it. It was only this base that got sniped incredibly easily. They're both with a little bit of care, like I'd like to see a couple more static defenses at each one of them, able to pretty much protect that fifth base on this map. These Zerglings have also been very clever throughout the game. Those who have been watching the minimap will have seen that Zeno has been very active about leaving one Zergling at each base that his opponent might want to take, so that as it's taken, even if the Zergling is killed instantly, he knows, oh, okay, I know that he's trying to expand there. Shakti is continuing to try to do these small pokes around the map, and when you look at this gigantic army pretty much moving around, it's a big 1A without really any support. Um, in any of these back bases, it works pretty well. He gets ended up pulled total out of, totally out of position. This other force is moving around as well, and really when you get right down to it, this harassment force is doing pretty well. Kills a lot of drones. If he had focused that down, that one Dark Templar would have been able to do a lot more damage, and that opens up the opportunity for this enormous Zealot force to march right in, cancel that, or actually I think that was straight up kill. Just march right in, kill that base again. Shakti is definitely getting very good at some Brood War style, for those of you who are fans of Brood War. Brood War style unit split and multiple harassment. So I'm going to pause right here. This is getting too aggressive in a cut-in. Cut-ins are very, very useful in trying to keep your opponent out of position and doing nasty things to them in that way, but if you find yourself now trapped and committed to an attack when they have an enormous force that's pretty much saying, oh, I'm coming for you, you gotta watch out, because as we're going to see here, as this attack plays out, these Blink Stalkers are wiped out really, really quickly. These Zealots get in and are able to get an okay position at the top of the map, but even though Ultralists don't do any bonus damage, look at the number of Zealots they hit with every swipe. There's like seven Zealots per every Ultralisk swipe getting hit, and they just eat through this force so quickly. The reinforcements are spawning out, so the Zerg player starts getting an actual surround, and it's just really, really bad for the Protoss player. 